Now, are you managing to hold your margins together with that as a backdrop? Well, uh, first of all, we're seeing that the, 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 there's a you know, big momentum and it's very encouraging signs for the trading and for the sales for the summer. And that's really because there's a lot of people out there who hasn't been able to take a holiday or go and visit friends and families now for close to, to three years. So you can see that there's definitely a pent up demand on this. You know, for, for instance, when you're looking at the Q4, our yield is up. 15% per passenger that is in there. And also it's positive when you're looking at the yield in Q3 versus even 2019. But it's true to say also that the, the cost that is now coming towards you know, uh, households and also companies for that matter, it hasn't really hit everybody at this point in time. At EasyJet, we're one of the best hedged airlines that is out there. So we protect it very much from the fuel going into the summer and then also then for, for the next winter. But I'd just like to point out that the fact is that for those people who who has a choice where they can prioritize over and above what is kind of the basic things to just get by, we know that traveling is really on the top of the list of what people want to do. And unemployment numbers is really at record low levels as well. And we do know that when people have certainty about the income and they have the opportunity that they can prioritize, we know that travel comes up really at the first, uh, top of the list. But like you said, you know, this is something that we're monitoring very carefully. But definitely for the summer, we see that there's a very big and, and, and strong pent up demand. Uh, Johan, I think I've answered my own question by looking deeper into your numbers. Airline revenue per seat up 29% year on year, uh, per seat at constant currency up 32.8%. Uh, is EasyJet still a low cost carrier, sir? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have, if anything, we believe widen our cost advantage against the legacy carriers, which represents you know, two thirds of the competition that we're seeing. And we have taken action really throughout the pandemic as well to sharpen the cost space in, in terms of a number of actions we've been doing. And we are always going to be able to offer attractive fares. In Q4, as an example, where I mentioned that we saw the yield being up 15%, you can still find throughout the summer, you know, some 25% of, of uh, our, our flights that is below 50 pounds. So, you know, there will be some trips and some flights that are more expensive, but you would always find great value. And also what to mention is that we have been in difficult times before when it comes to uh, challenges from an economical point of view from households. And we know that when people are feeling really distrained, they tend to gravitate towards value. They tend to gravitate towards value and brands they trust. And we are number one rated when it comes to value and trust in many of our markets. So we will actually fare better than competition in those tougher times relatively. Johan, it's Karen jumping in. I just wanted to bring up fuel costs. I can see 64% of the second half fuel is hedged, but that's not all of the amount mitigated given we've seen such a strong rise. Others are hedged at 80%. So just give us a sense of some of the pain you may still be facing on the fuel side into the second half. Well, you know, that is part of the, the, the equation as well, and you need to take that into consideration all the mitigating actions that we've been doing also from a, from a cost point of view as well. So that all blends in into to something that still gives us the opportunity to offer really attractive you know, fares for, for, for customers and look forward to a profitable summer as well. But I, like I said, you know, we do know that there's a big increase in, in the demand for the summer. The run rate now, if you compare it to the last 10 weeks in 2019 at the same point in time, is up 13% for Q4. It's 6% overall in the summer. But you're absolutely right. We need to make sure that we continue to do all the work we have been doing on cost. And we're coming out of this pandemic with having sustainable cost advantages that we have done through increased productivity, uh, increased flexibility among our crew, as an example, that I don't think that you will see many other airlines have been doing. But it's absolutely something we're very mindful of. Can you talk about wage pressures here? Because we've had uh, very high inflation numbers crossing right across various countries. Interest rates are going up as well. Uh, people want higher wages at this point. That's a, the loud message coming through. What are you facing when it comes to your workers? Yeah, so we have current agreements with, with our unions that, that is, uh, you know, on an ongoing basis that we are being discussing, you know, the, the possible outcomes of, of those as well. And you're absolutely right. With low unemployment numbers, you know, it will put pressure also on, on, on the cost and, and on, on labor. But that's something that we are facing and that's something we're dealing with. Easy debt is, is in a good position because we are an attractive brand. We, we don't have, you know, difficulties uh, having people to come and work for the company as well because the nature 
nature of the company as well. But of course, that is something that we need to take into consideration when we're looking at the overall cost pressure we have.